back again. Hello. Oh, it's good to be back. What a day. Nice to relax with some friends <laughs> and to be in the company of uh, cult entertainment, sci-fi, fantasy, horror, comedy, whatever we feel like. Actually, I think it's a bit of all of those things on this edition of the show. This is the Space Book, a bustling hub and home for all out there. Entertainment, decades of uh, pop pop cultures, good, bad, and ugly, lining the shelves and filling up the playlists on, on uh, Sky Glass or your TiVo box or wherever else here in the 21st century. Barely a week goes by in the streaming age where some hot new show, some breakout must-see, isn't recommended to us by someone somewhere, some smart-ass website that we're following or some app or there's a menu or something that pops up on the TV. We've got to get round to that, but how do you prioritise it? Or where does one find the time when so many of them pop up one by one by one by one? And when there's so much good stuff back there in decades past for us to go back and revisit either old favourites or things we missed the first time around. And that definitely, definitely uh, describes the show that we're going to be talking about this time here on the Space Book listed. We're live on YouTube and Facebook in front of a live audience, and we'll be switching the channels to take comments from them to, as ever, for their observations and their memories. I'm Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks, <laughs> and I've got some friends to bring on. First of all, it's my my buddy, the screenwriter and director and hot foot from, from the set, or a set, in a secret location somewhere not entirely sure where, but he has been somewhere doing what he does best. And now he's back to chew the fat, which is the thing he does sort of second best in David Diaz. <laughs> Definitely second best. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm good. Keep it just, out, mischief. Uh, yeah, just tired. That's all way bloody tired. Do you like my um, stormtrooper? He's, uh, he's pretty good, isn't he? What does he do? Yeah, he just bobs his head up and down and tries to kill me, but keeps missing me. So oh, yeah, uh, not, there you go. <laughs> well, they're notorious and not very good shots, are they? No. Stormtrooper. No. <laughs> <laughs> he missed me five times uh, already. So there you go. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you expect? What do you expect? Would you believe it, In We're live again for this edition of the show on YouTube and Facebook. And if you are watching in any of those places and you want to chip in with your memories, it's whatever point in the show, because we will be asking for your comments too, then please remember to uh, hit the little link over on Facebook and then Facebook will tell StreamYard who you are and StreamYard will tell us and we'll all be on first name terms for this cosy little discussion. This geek out about TV, about telefantasy past, Ian. Do you scare easily, mate? No, not really. Uh, horror films don't scare me anymore because they do the usual stuff, don't they? I think I okay. think films are running out of ideas, I think, at the end of the day. So yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> if, if movies don't scare you, maybe the rest of the panel will. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay. <laughs> let's, well, let's welcome our good friends returning to the show. But they've never been on, on at the same time before. So no. this is a monumental occasion. Mm. We bring on Nikki P. Smalley and the Department of Wendology. Wendy. Hello both. Hey, okay? yeah. <laughs> hey all. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome back to the Madhouse. Glad yes. To be. Yes, very at home in the madhouse. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Always. the show that we're going to talk about on on this particular edition of the Space Book Listed fits right into that. If you feel like you're going out of your mind, you probably are. And I'm mm. delighted to say it's not just us either. Joining us and look, looking very much the part in a Ghostbusters t-shirt, she's come to bust out some. She's come to bust out some truths. And tell us, tell us what for <laughs> as we get stuck into the show. Melina Vader, welcome back to the Space Book Listed. Yay! <laughs> you, you're, you're mute. You're Switch on mute. On. You're on mute. Hello. There you go. Yeah. There she is. Hello. <laughs> you made it. I made it. I'm alive. Mm. No sleep. Good. No, no sleep. sleep, but she's no. alive. Mm. Good to she see you. She looks tired, though. Okay. What? I said you look tired. Oh, I look alive. That's enough. 
<laughs> Posit- <laughs> positively glowing, positively going. Yes, this this is the show, in case any of you have forgotten that, it's been a little while, it's been a couple of weeks. This is the show where we dig in deep into a, a pick of the week, really, a TV show, sometimes a movie, but mainly a TV show from decades past. It could be 10 years ago, it could be 20, it could be 30, it could be 40, it could be 50, it could be 60, like the last time when we got together and we talked about The Saint. That was a lot of fun. We had a lot of feedback from that. Uh, people asking us about Talking Pictures TV and could we talk to Talking Pictures TV? So we're going to see what we can do about all of that. Keep an eye on the schedules for whatever's on Talking Pictures TV. We'll be certain to uh, to sort of tie in with that again at some point in the future. I think we all enjoyed that. But yeah, this uh, let's go and check, actually. Let's go and see who's watching. We've got a few comments from the people who are watching on the other channel. So let's go and check in with them now before we get going. Oh, we have uh, who's first? Who's first? We've got a lot. <laughs> we've got a lot of old nonsense. Here. I don't know what any of the, can anybody decipher this? Bingle, bongle, dingle, dangle, yickety do, yickety da, ping pong, lippy tappy, tootar. I think that's David Tennant. Um, I think that's from one of David Tennant's episodes. One of David Tennant's it, Doctor Who. Does yeah. it say to midnight? Is it one yes, yes. of midnight? Spot on. Oh. Yes, that's God. the one with um, Leslie Sharp. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm. That was a brilliant episode. I enjoyed that. Yeah, very spooky. Our point is all all expect us to be to be awake here. We've got uh, Mr. Brown says big bottoms, big big bottoms. Well, whatever turns okay. you on, my friend. Uh, <laughs> the, night, the night is young. Good luck. Good luck with that. The pubs are open till oh. about eleven, I think. About eleven. This, uh, this is my face, Mr. Brown. This is my face. <laughs> uh, greeting all. There's Darren M, and we've got a hi from Sam. Hi there, from Sam. In fact, two words. How are you mm. doing? How are you doing, Ian? Says, uh, I'm Darren. doing all right. Doing all right, Darren. Doing all right. He's doing all right. We keep mm. keeping him out on the straight and narrow, kind of, aren't we? And a hey all from Vanessa Law. Good to see you. Vanessa. Uh, hey, Vanessa. Vanessa. Hello. That's a big bobblehead. That's your stormtrooper yeah. there. Yes, yeah. Found there in the form of Jack Thursby. Yeah. Yep. He's, uh, as I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Carol Jude says we should get down a few of those great Doctor Who war clocks. He could have different times up, like the old timey news programs. I could, couldn't I? The time on it, the time in fun. Birmingham, yeah, one in Birmingham, yeah. one with the time on Mars, Mina, and the other one in some sort of parallel dimension, maybe in Pete's world. <laughs> <laughs> could, could be a giggle, couldn't it? So I see people have found the level already. <laughs> the Darren Zone says hail and greetings from uh, from quite nearby. Yes, yeah, and, Lee, uh, yes. Lee, have, you the people. Mess- have you answered my messages? Lee, who never answers my messages and never calls. Lee, me. Lee, Lee, where are you, Lee? Problem we have problem being. Oh. Uh, problem greetings, being. all says Terry on Tuesday. Yes. Trouble. Here he is, problem there being. Is. Says, "Lovely to see you, Melina." So mm-hmm. there, we have made contact <laughs> with the elusive problem being. Hello, gang. Just dropping by. Got to go to the shops. Well, get your priorities right. Yeah. For heaven's sake, bro. <laughs> he's, he's avoiding me because he doesn't answer my messages. That's right. Uh oh, he's in Uh-oh. trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so on the naughty step now, my friend. Public shaming. Yes. You- <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> We've got domestics here on the space book listed. This is what we love to see. Keep it coming, keep it coming. And if you are enjoying what you've what you're listening to and what you're seeing so far, and why wouldn't you? You don't get this gold anywhere else, do you? Please like the video now because you may forget later on. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little cloister bell so you get the notifications about when and what we're doing next. More live streams, more podcasts, more nonsense. Sometimes it makes sense, but uh, we we don't promise anything. We don't promise anything. <laughs> okay. We have the Hope rabbi. Media. The rabbi's we- there as well. The rabbi's oh, here too. I didn't see the rabbi. He's, he's the uh, hey ho says the rabbi Sfila Beckin. How good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Yes, so we're we're once again stretching back through the decades on home media from the from the days of the Blu-rays and DVDs that we've got filling up our homes now. But uh, in many respects, my spiritual home was this place. This is my local VHS rental store where I grew oh, up in Craigleith. Uh, there it is. That's a photograph I've t- I've just found. I'm just showing, showing you guys on the panel. <laughs> yes, that brings back lots of warm and fuzzy memories to me. But yep. having said that, you know, the VHS era is kind of long gone now, I think. And, and I'm very fond of VHS. But as a collector of home media, my sweet spot, I think, has been the DVD. And uh, would you believe that this week marks a milestone in the history of media 
in all its forms, but particularly when it comes to the digital versatile disc. So this we, it's now 25 years this week since the Humble DVD first entered the market as something that you that people could collect. You could buy a player, you could buy the first discs. And Is that what it that stands for? Yeah. Do you know, I was thinking the same thing, Ian. I was like, oh, that nails a nice pub quiz question. Thank you. Dan. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, originally it was supposed to stand for a digital video disc, uh, but they mm. decided because of the fact that this could be used, could be optimized for use in a multitude of different places, such as the, t the TV and film industry and, you know, and, and software as well, mm. that um, its longevity would be, would be assured and because of its versatility. It's, um, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, out of all the formats uh, for, for the last, what, 20 years, mate, DVD is still going. Yeah. Still yeah. going. Mm. I mean, even, even though Blu-ray is far more superior in picture quality, DVD still sells more. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Absolutely yeah. crazy. I have I have the figures here. It really really surprised me because yeah, the first the first uh, films they were all released in a, a sort of raft. They released thirty. Warner Brothers were the first to get something uh, a, a actual selection of films to the to the market. Films like Blade Runner, the director's cut, mm. and Batman, and all that kind of thing. But the very first DVD actually released. Can you can you guess? Have you got any idea, Mina? What you think it may be? What the very first film? Back in 1997, to be issued on DVD was for the American wow. market. That's a hard question. <laughs> uh, we'll so no, me, no, then. <laughs> how about you? How about you, Nicky? Do you have a guess at that? Um, yeah, I feel like it's going to be something really rubbish, like Holy Man, Weirdy Murphy, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really naff. They're, they're just going oh. to say, "Oh, we'll knock that out, see how it does." I so so wish it was. When have you got any any good punts on this one? Late nineties, we're talking. Oh, Warner Brothers. Boy. The first. Oh, we're oh we're going Warner Brothers. Hmm. Trying to remember which was it Jaws, because I, I know that came out in seventy. I was Universal. It's a good guess, I couldn't then. remember, yeah, if it was a universal or if it was um, no, it's the one Dan mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's universal. universal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, so it's Warner Brothers, the first uh, DVD, uh, the first that came on DVD. That's right. Was it yeah. Firefox? Was it Batman? Was it, uh, I don't know, could it be Dirty Harry? <laughs> I don't know. Dirty Harry's no. Warner Brothers, isn't it? No, so, um, but you, you aren't too... Too far off. Only 20, only 20, 30 years. So this was the first mm. film to be to be issued mm. onto DVD there by oh, Warner Brothers. Oh, no way. Oh, oh I was going to say <laughs> Twister. Oh, I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, there you go. You've got to go with your gut feeling there, Mina. That is so, so yeah. trippy. I was disappointed when I got that film because it didn't have the play mats and the colours and the circle and stuff like that. So <laughs> I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> It's like this film. Like, what's going yeah. on there? <laughs> you got Good old Twister. Swiss, mate. Yeah, yeah. I like, the seg I like the segment there as well, the dark side of nature. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, I think it's it's the, Jan uh, de Bont's uh, film, Twister. It says they're from the director of Speed, Speed, from the producers of Jurassic Park, Mina. Twister. Yes. And he directed, I think it was Speed, and he directed, I think, the second Tomb Raider film, The Cradle of Life. The one mm. with Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. Did he, did he direct a Star Trek film as well? Or was that somebody else? No, you're thinking no, of Stuart Baird, I think. That's it. Yeah, that's the fella. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <sighs> without this film, I don't think ITV2 would have anything to show uh, three nights a week. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, on, yeah. it's on that often. But yeah, I, I'm really fond of DVDs. I've got a massive collection of, of DVDs. For, for me, this I format think. has... It's been around, obviously, for now 25 years. I remember speaking to somebody who went to Olympia for the UK launch, Ian. That was in 1998. And wow. he came back. This is a work thing. He came back to the office raving about it and said to me, Dan, because we, we were both video collectors, he said, Dan, I'm never buying another VHS tape ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be more expensive, though. When it first came out, it was quite expensive, DVDs. And then, obviously, the price mm -hmm. went down and stuff. But I remember yeah. I was in... um. I used to work for a post-production company and they used to ha have these things every year where they used to hire this huge hall and all these companies used to have their stores and stuff. And I remember seeing yeah. um, 
somebody putting a DVD in because it was laser disc first, and then they said, "Oh, look, it's like laser disc, but it's a lot smaller." And they demonstrated it and stuff <laughs> like that. That was pretty amazing. I was like, "Wow, the picture's really cool." Um, but now it's nothing compared to Blu-ray and 4K and all that. It's, it's just yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's sort of it's sort of brought in a new standard, really, because although that was a, a massive step up from VHS, from the fuzziness of uh, of p a picture mm. that you got to sort of track in, so it would behave yeah. itself. We, we now kind of take it for granted, but that, that DVD uh, bitrate, whatever you want to call it, it's 480p, isn't it? Yeah, so it's it's now what we now know as standard resolution, uh, yeah. SD, and it's 480p. And, of course, mm. HD is anything between 720 and 1080p, and then you've got the 4K stuff going up and up and up. Nikki, it seems like the dark ages now, and yet I remember seeing, the, seeing my very first DVD and, and just being being blown away by the, by the difference and the fact that you could get it as well it was all anamorphic too well the early discs weren't actually were they but you could have either four three or widescreen on the same disc a lot of the time or flip them over and both versions would be in the same pack i think yeah. i've got a um, lethal weapon that ha has has the film like all the lethal weapon films but it has it on both sides of the disc do you remember i mean that's, yeah, yeah 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 they used to have them sorry um, Nikki, oh, yeah. I just jumped in there. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I I remember uh, my dad saying we're going to get a DVD because he always my dad's always been like at the forefront of technology just because he's got no bed to spend his money on, and uh, <laughs> he used to he, he was like we're going to get a DVD player. And it was one of them where if you bought one, you got three DVDs. Um, oh yes, yeah, so we I got remember. we got Holy Man, which is why I said that was my my choice because I remember just thinking what a crap film, um, and. Uh, the, the modern uh, version of My Favourite Martian with Christopher Lloyd and, oh, and yes. like that. that was literally our first choice. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is appalling. And I think I went out to Tesco and spent 20 quid for Austin Powers and the Spy Who Shed Queen. Um, <laughs> but, but, I mean, yeah, I mean what, it's interesting how things have changed. Are like When you used to put a DVD on then, you used to have to wait about 10 minutes while I went for all the messages and then all the interactive menu used to take ages before it would get to to play yeah. and i remember right. my nana my nana first getting a dvd player and uh, she bought uh, hearsay had broke up and all their concert dvds <laughs> went in pound shop so she went in pound shop picked it up and i said how are you getting on with dvd places well, it's all right, but I'm just watching the Reds spin round and it's singing the same song over and over. So you need to press play. You need to press play. <laughs> she thought the menu was the, was the main feature. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the first two players that were brought to market. This is a Panasonic machine and a Toshiba machine. Mm. And they came in at around £400 or $600. Mm. And God, they were, that uh, is yeah. Not a money one. But you yeah. know what, right? There's, there's something beautiful about the second one. It just, it just, yeah, it just, you know what, it reminds me of stuff like, you know, cassette tapes and all that. And mm. it just, it just takes me back when I look at things like that. It really is quite, quite, a, a, quite a, a really nice a designed machine, that one. It is a, it is a pretty machine. Yeah. It kind yeah. of reminds me of the stackable, remember the old like stackable yes. components yeah. that you have in yeah. your, your stereo system, yeah. system at home. Yeah. Yeah. Serious music imagine, fans used to have have those sort of separates. They used to call them separates, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, you can imagine it stacked under your turntable, couldn't you? Yeah. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Mina. What was that? Ah, it, it also came in combo. My my uh, dad has the V the I get the VCR with the yeah yeah. He still yeah. has it. The, I think um my mum has one upstairs. She she has a she has a VHS and dvd combo which is really weird when you think about it it's just weird but you know yeah it's crazy I, right? my theory was that the more things you had in combination on those things the more there was to go wrong and particularly mm. and, and potentially mm. sort of take out your entire your entire home entertainment system all in all in one so we always stayed away from those but i think they were a lot of fun and they look pretty cool i'd, I'd kind of like one now <laughs> i do and the films that the films that came out i mean i started my collection Back in, in 2001, I bought my first player. I sort of saved up money for it over a few months because at the time I got a, I got a young family and whatever else. And, uh, yeah, I eagerly awaited it. I remember thinking, well, you know, I'll just buy one here and there. And I got sort of addicted. But the films, as you said, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. The films, they you would 
the idea was they were trying to wean you into the habit of buying them. So like you said, Nikki, a lot of the times, if you had a player, there'd be one or two or sometimes three films in there where you get your, you'd get your choice. And mm. uh, the first one that I had with my player, can, can you guess, Ian, what the very first film I ever bought on DVD was? Well, it's not Doctor Who related, is it? So, <laughs> um, I don't know. Was it uh, Lethal Weapon? I don't know. Um, was it an no. action thing? It no? is an action thing, yeah. Uh, Die Hard? No, but you're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. I'll, I think uh, I've got Bruce answer. Willis. <laughs> no, it ha- no, it hasn't. But it's got it's another action film. But it is yeah. it yeah, is a James Bond film. It's the world uh, is not enough. Right. I got that. Yeah. Well, this Bond is the, the 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 uh, Lethal Weapon collection. This is VHS, and I remember yes. buying this. And, and what's interesting about VHS? Sorry to jump the gun there, Dan. But what's interesting about VHS is that you put the VHS in, it plays the menu. You can click on it. It will immediately play. But Blu-ray, you have to wait till the thing revs up. How is that? The picture's better. How is like, that an advanced tech? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's just so <laughs> sad. You got, I can't speak for you guys, but you used to have to rev up, rev up my first DVD player. Too, oh, really? Exactly the same way. Yeah, you'd hear you'd hear it sort of reading the layers. And, and mm. as somebody's mentioned here in, in the chat watching on YouTube, Peter Harrington says that uh, the basic, the early ones, you'd have to turn over a lot of the discs halfway yeah. through yeah, because they weren't dual layered. You know, yeah. the dual layered ones came in afterwards. Mm. And so I think when I had mine, dual layered had come in, but the player that I'd got, which is a great big thing, great big sod you could actually hear it audibly hear it go from one layer to another halfway mm. through the film yeah. yeah i had the world is not enough and this yeah, was i, I think it was some it was 20 pounds but you could have two for 30 pounds so guess what i had as my other one i don't know um spy love me <laughs> close close no. i had dr no, <laughs> dr. no. <laughs> <laughs> so i started my i started my james bond collection right away there and i've never never really looked back i mean i've been collecting them ever since and you know you're quite right ian for something yeah. that has been superseded by blu-ray and now 4k dvd yeah the uh the format does still have this kind of stranglehold really there's been a recent mm. top uh chart put together and it's revealed that uh, yeah in the marketplace at the moment the ultra hd blu-ray they make up 6.9 percent of the market for this and and 4k has been around for nearly five years believe it or not blu-ray which has been around for i think it's 10 years i've i think i've read Mm. maybe slightly longer that's that's got 28 percent 28 percent of the market wendy but yeah, Ian's, Ian's right. 65.1% of the market for home media is still DVD. I mean, you, you can get box sets like, um, and this is like, you can get box sets like Alien, you know, you, you've got all the Alien films and, and box sets, stuff like you. It's very rare that you get a box set on, on uh, Blu ray, mm. unless it's like something special, I guess. Um, well, like they have, it's more expensive, isn't it? Yeah, they have, oh, they have Jurassic Park and. In- <laughs> Sorry, uh-huh. uh, they had us. <laughs> By the way, it's it's number before Christmas, just in case. Oh, cool. <laughs> and Very I cool. and I and two different because I couldn't find the other one, so I I, I this is the. Oh. Why not? I was wearing my Christmas socks last week, Mina. Don't worry about it. Um, What was I saying? Ah, they they have sometimes they have the the Blu ray and the DVD uh, box set. They have for Jurassic Mm. Park. Mm. Yes. Uh, They have for DVD and Blu ray. Same with um, some Stephen King movies. The last DVD box set that I bought was Hercules, the one with the horrible. And mm. Cena. oh yeah, and that's oh that's Cena, cool. yes, and they have in, in oh sorry in Walmart. I remember my dad being angry when he got um, Ben Hur on DVD, mm-hmm. and uh, they showed it in scope. So because they shot it yes. in scope, so uh-huh. when dad put it on, he was like, "Some of the some, some of the things missing at the top. The picture's missing at the top." And I had to explain to him, "No, dad, it's the format they <laughs> shot in. You're seeing everything. In the black bars and the top and the bottom. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. When you're not expecting oh, that, yeah. yeah. Mm, oh, do you yeah. remember that? Also, I think there are several DVDs. Um, I know that Monsters Inc. has one that." One side is white screen, and yes. flip it, the other side is full screen. Yeah, mm. yeah. 
Yeah. Or sometimes I... uh, channels will show films in the wrong format. Like I uh, was watching The Rock today, and I know that was shot in scope. And yet, mm. uh, what is it? Um, I think uh, Amazon has shown it uh, 69. And you're sitting there going, why? You know what I mean? So anyway, mm. whatever. Sorry. I die digress a bit sorry <laughs> we've but, got yeah. some great memories being stirred up for people watching along here we have a vcr dvd combo but yeah. unused so it's probably seized up confesses robert Payne. give it a dust off just bleh. i can't speak can i this evening i have these shows sometimes <laughs> give it a dust off robert and get back to us with whether it is uh, still alive or not my dad still uses oh. it my, my dad is a dinosaur he, he he still uses it my dad is an old fossil <laughs> and we, and um, he has, he has. Now that I just remember, he has my my Johnny Depp <laughs> DVD collection. Was he? <laughs> yeah, right there. Jamie Knight asks me, Dan, do you have Never Say Never Again? I'm a James Bond fan, of course I have. And Terry on Tuesday adds that physical media is being phased out, so they can charge you for yearly subscription yeah. fees. Yeah, they don't True. like us owning the stuff, mm -hmm. do they? No. After years of forcing it into our hands, Ian. They now don't want us to own it. Because, yeah, for the purposes of uh, our conversations on this show, DVDs kind of redefined, as you said, Ian, the, the way that media mm. was packaged with the digipacks, the big rollout things of not just of movies, but of TV shows too. Complete also, seasons um, of hit shows yeah. both so from anywhere in the world, really, not just both sides of the Atlantic. And you could pick them up at first a season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's it used right. to cost about 70 quid and the X-Files mm. and all those things. But mm. they were sort of beautifully presented at the time. And we thought that, that uh, getting them in standard definition was probably the best they were ever going to look. And I certainly snapped them all up and built yeah. up a library. And I, I couldn't get enough of it. And I still, I still pick them up now. But what I wanted, I wanted to know if either of you guys, any of you guys, Nikki, can you remember what was your first DVD? Um, well, as I said earlier, I think it was Holy Man and uh, uh, well, My Favourite Martian, which came with the player. But I did I like Holy couple, Man. I did like it. I, I thought it was fun. Um, I thought it was the, the only, fun. There's only one bit I found funny, which were um, Morgan Fairchild, which gets electric shot cheap in her face. Just went like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, purchasing, I think it was uh, The Spy Who Shagged Me, I remember um, oh, that must have being in Tesco, and it was, I remember it being £20 exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I remember as well, because I'd, I'd bought the first season of Buffy on VHS, which of course was massive. So as soon I. as I saw it on DVD, I was like, can I have return have yeah. this <laughs> and swap it? <laughs> Even though yeah. it cost me three times as much. Um, but yep. it, it was, you know, it was just a thing. But the thing, what I would say about the media overall is the thing that I like and the things I've kept because I, I, I'm more, as you know, I'm more digital now than I am yeah. physical media. But I love, I've always been potty for the more uh, collect-looking box sets. So, like, I've got the yeah. Phantasm Spear. Mm. Um, I've got the uh, Alien Head. So it's a giant, uh, I giant remember that Alien Head. Mm -hmm. And I dropped on that because I got 50 quid from HMV in sale. Uh, but I had to bring it back <laughs> on a bus from Barnsley, which were a nightmare. And then I got this bad boy, which I'm, Look at this. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. That so, is so cool. And in the back, it's got all the films oh, of the Tim Burton film, plus that the animated is... series. Oh. And the, wow. And the wow. It's great. And I love that. And I love that this is dying, even though it's probably going to be. Um, and you've got a working ventriloquist yeah. dummy there to take around the working <laughs> men's clubs and earn yourself a couple of quid, earn yeah. the money back that it cost you to buy the set in the first place. Everyone is a winner. Everyone's a winner. So do you have any idea what your first DVD was, Mina? I think, I think it was Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh. I think. Oh, popular choice. Yeah. I Fantastic think because choice. Mommy... Um, yeah, I think it was because mommy bought me the DVD because she's a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean of the, the Disney. And so, yeah, I think I think that was it. I uh, That was my first. And I I've, obviously, I still have it. I have the whole collection of Pirates of the Caribbean on DVD. Yeah. So I think that was my first one. Yeah, Pirates mm. of the Caribbean. It wow. must have sold a ton, that film. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that along. was popular. Especially yeah, it was just at the right time. That, Johnny Depp was like at at that moment as uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. That was like his 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 how do you say boom? Like 
his rights. Uh, that was like a, a, a big moment for him in his career. Mm. And they didn't, they didn't know what he was going to do with the character. He came on set and when he started um, yeah. performing, as the director was like, what? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because yeah. they, they didn't have any rehearsal. He just came on set and he was prancing he was around like a lot. And he, yeah he was he wanted yeah. to be like a drunk pirate but he's yeah. he wasn't like really drunk he wanted to be like keith reed, reed, yeah, reed he did, yeah but um and he was nominated i think he was the first actor in a disney movie nominated for an oscar if i'm not mistaken wow. but yeah he was nominated for an oscar yes i think he was yeah yeah was wasn't julie, I love julie andrews nominated for um mary poppin was she not no? well, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're wrong she was. Well, she, yeah, but Jill, well, she won it for Mary Poppins because the same year they did My Fair Lady and she'd done it on West End. And All right. when they made the film version, um, uh, they, they said, oh, Jack Warner said, oh, we're not having an unknown uh, yeah. be the star of this film. and got Audrey Hepburn and dubbed her voice with Rufus, uh, Rufus Wainwright's mother. Who did the voice mm. of Audrey Hepburn singing? Uh, but then Julie Andrews won the Oscar for Mary Poppins, so it was wow. like a second two things as well. Jack Warner, really. Your Planet but, of the Apes set has gone down very well with the people who are watching and listening along. That, here that really is Oscar. so cool. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that before. That's fantastic. And Terry is on his way right off to eBay. He's probably there now, <laughs> tapping away. I, I don't blame him. I've just seen as well, Carol, oh Carol yes, Jude. Yes, yes. Carol Jude's put um, this is Spinal Tap. When that came out, and I've yeah. got that version still, it's got a miniature working version of the amplifier that goes up to 11. And you can oh. see the time <laughs> yeah. and it actually works. It's only this big. It's brilliant. That's so cool. Two how, about you, how about you, Wendy? Can you remember what the first DVD you ever had was? I'm, I've been sat here trying to think, and I honestly cannot remember for the life of me. I mean, I'd be taking an absolute guess. Um, yeah. Just trying to think back to when DVDs first started coming out, and I mean that I just can't remember. Well, see, it could be close encounters. It could be. It just depends on when those came years. out. Because yeah. they did. They trickled out, didn't they? All our favourite films gradually trickled yeah. out. We've got people in the chat who are filling it up with their memories of what their first films were that they bought. Carol Jean's there with yeah. This is Smile on Tap. A few, a few others there, a few other suggestions, a few other choices. And from Dusk Till Dawn was the first DVD I watched, says Jack Thursby. So keep those coming. Keep your memories coming of, of the dawn of DVD and whichever was the first film you were gifted or owned. How about you, Ian? What was, your, what was the first one this you one. Do you remember? Uh, oh, 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 what's, what's this? The, the Exorcist. Oh, the Exorcist. that's awesome. It's the old case. You see the old case where yeah, you start open up like that? Yeah. snappers. And there is, I yep. think that's... There's uh, information, have, there's data on both sides. Yeah, you flip it over to watch the other side and stuff. So this is wow. one of the, the very first ones I ever got. And I've, I've kept it in pristine condition. Because the I've reason why I've kept it in pristine condition is because I've only watched this film once on DVD and it scares the shit out of me. But I still <laughs> like to have it in my collection. We so. found oh, the film that scares him, everybody. We found, that, we found it. You told me that movies don't scare you anymore. <laughs> well, and now we the modern one. <laughs> this one is brilliant. <laughs> the director's cut also i think it's uh yeah it's yeah yeah it's, there's nothing like the original though like every every i know they try to improve on it the director goes back and try and stick more things in and stuff like that i'm always happy with the original stuff and i don't care what anyone says blade runner with the the vo from <laughs> from harrison ford i like <laughs> i liked it i don't care what anybody that was, that was a big big hit yeah. on blu-ray too yeah, so uh, on dvd i mean god mm. oh, what is the matter with my head tonight okay so yes <laughs> happy 25th birthday to the humble dvd and everybody who's watching and listening along please add your picks your memories of what your very first dvd ever was or box set of a TV show or whatever else. And we'll check in with you guys a little later on in our conversation. See you in a moment. <laughs> yeah, oh, we've got, like, we've got an interlude there, <laughs> musical interlude for Mina. How lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's brightening things up a little bit. Okay, so yes, we are here to talk about one TV show in particular, as is always on this show, 
I said to these guys, what shall we watch? And we've got a little list of shows between us. And we pulled, we pulled one out and we're going to see now what we all thought of it. We've all watched, we've watched this, Tales from the Dark Side. It's a uh, 1980s American anthology horror TV show created by the great George A. Romero. And it debuted in October 1983 with a pilot episode and was picked up for a full season the following autumn, September 84, in syndication, running for four seasons right the way through to, to 1988. Each episode originally aired by Tribune Broadcasting as a late night show. Short stories with a, a little bit of a, a sting, a sting in the tale and playing off all the genres that we love best. So science fiction, fantasy, black black comedy and yeah. horror now i've mm -hmm. heard of this show i've got to be honest it's a show that wendy you in fact you mentioned it to me and that was sort of why we put this in the mix in the mix because it was something that you talked about quite a lot but it's a show that i get mixed up with other things because there are a lot of anthology shows and there yes. were a hell of a lot in that explosion of cable channels in the early 80s weren't there so i couldn't quite yeah. remember which one tales from the dark side was but i gather you must have watched this when you were when you were younger Yes, yeah. Well, um, this this was just such a great um, draw for me because obviously it, it makes me think about the original um, Twilight Zone type stories. They were they were they were nowhere near as good um, as the original Twilight Zones, but they were they were just something different, and it was something about that that intro and that wonderful voiceover um, and that eerie music. Um, it reminded me a lot of growing up watching horror movies on a Saturday. Um, and it, it just brought back those memories. So yeah, we, we watched this. Um, we watched this as, you know, friends of mine, you know, um, my later well, school it years. It reminded me, Wendy, obviously watching this for the first time, because I've never really seen this show before. And as soon as that opening kicked in, the, the opening credit sequence, such as it is, it's more of a stinger now. It's kind of like the, the opening mm. credits we get on a lot of the DC shows, like The Flash. It's just a few seconds. But it reminded me of the Dark Shadows opening credit sequence too. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it does have that sort of very um, gothic and minimal feel to it. <laughs> yes, and very minimal. Yeah, yes, that's a good so, so, point. You, know, you mentioned the Twilight Zone. So, of course, the Twilight Zone is the anthology show. You know, wherever yeah. you are in the world, that's that's the big one. But there'd been several uh, since the original Twilight Zone show, mm -hmm. and this there was uh, things like uh, Night Gallery. I'm thinking of in particular the other yeah. Rod Serling show. And uh, what el what else came after that? You know, the several Outer from. Limits. Outer yeah, limits, the Outer yeah. Limits is the is yeah. the other big one, and Tales from the Unexpected was the big one in the uk and uh yeah i think that when you when you think back to this precise time in tv history a cheap and cheerful show like this which as you say it's not as cerebral as as the twilight zone and i, I gather that some of them were adapted from short stories just as the twilight zone was but i get the impression just from the couple of episodes because we've we've all watched two episodes of this in the last few days some of us have watched much more haven't they nikki <laughs> we've all yeah. watched two episodes and i don't know if these are a good snapshot of what was to come or not but around the same time you'd got the uh, the cat sigh movie the stephen king thing that was in cinemas creep yeah. show had been quite big in cinemas oh, and so yeah. this this i think mina kind of sprung out of the success of mm -hmm. movies like that mhm mm uh the it's just I kind of I enjoy those kind of and what do you call those Antho anthologies? Anthologies. Yeah. Yeah. Those kind of tells you know you, this is a funny story. So I actually started watching it and I got emotional because I thought that it was based on the not that. Sorry. That's. <laughs> no, sorry, based, sorry. Based on the um. The book series to uh scary stories to tell in the dark. Okay. Yes. Well, and I I thought when I saw that I got confused and I thought it was based on the on the books. Mm -hmm. I, I still have the collection. I, I, I that's what I thought. And then when I was watching, I was like, wait, this is not it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's still it's like I guess I I call it the more adult version. What I had this brush. The more uh, adult version of scary, 
scary stories to tell in the dark. Mm. And I remember I was like, what, 13 years old? Uh, I was in middle school. And I think it will air like in a Saturday night. And one of the first stories I saw was one with the teddy bear. Ooh. And that was a really creepy episode. <laughs> it was, I think it was a girl, a little girl. And um, she kept saying that her teddy bear was evil. It was like the Chucky. It was like Chucky. Like, you would do some... <laughs> Chucky bear. And I get the impression, Mina, as somebody who didn't grow up with, with this show, but who's okay. watched other anthology series, that this will be... When you talk about it with other people and you say, oh, remember that show, remember Tales from the Dark Side, what about the one with the giant teddy bear? What about the one with the rabbit with the fangs? What That kind of show where people may not know the, the title of the episode, but they'll remember something that scared uh -huh. the living crap out of them in whichever story it was. I'm always a teddy bear because I remember it had red eyes and it had, like, like fangs. I remember Ooh. that one. Yeah. It was yeah. pretty creepy. Um, but I can't remember which season it was. It was, like, it was years. I haven't seen How long season. did it run for? Four seasons, 80-odd episodes. This was a long-running TV show. Very, very popular. Of course, it did spawn a film around 1990, 1991. Wow. It was that much, of a, mm -hmm. that much of a big... This was a major, major success. And I think it's probably because it was modestly budgeted mm -hmm. and they... They, it met its expectations, so they knew they got. A, they were working to a certain budget. It was to be shown at a certain time of night, so they were going to catch people coming out of bars and pubs or whatever else. <laughs> I don't know. And also, it was really marketable as well, so they could ship it around, shop it around, and it had George A. Romero as a kind of creative, yes. Yes. if not a creative lead, if not a showrunner in the way that we know them now. Ian, this is yeah. a. This was a big name to have above the door of a show like this. George mm -hmm. A. Romero is one of the names in horror, isn't it? So that's bound to get anybody's attention, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, are, you, are you a fan <laughs> of his name? Um, I'd, I can take him or leave him. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's, zombie, he's the zombie man, isn't he? He's made loads of zombie movies and... You know, this is I mean, what I love about working with Ian. When you expect him to give you, when you expect him to give you a really short answer, he goes, "Ah, oh, he, he sentence," and then when you think he's going to be, he's going to run with it and tell you how brilliant George A. Romero was, he goes, oh, "It's all right." Yeah. the thing is, though, I don't. The, the 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 thing about me is that um, yeah. if I if I find something that doesn't work or if I dislike something, I don't pretend that I like it. I tell you exactly what I think and. That's, I mean, he's the zombie guy, isn't he? You know, I mean, he's the zombie guy. I've seen loads of his zombie movies, and more or less, they're the same. And he was the first guy, or he was the one that made it popular and stuff. Tales from the Dark. He's he's responsible for Tales of the Dark. So I never knew that at all. Did yeah. I read the credits? Yeah, because it, for you, it was just the zombie man. He's just the zombie man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, to me, I, I've never seen this show, certainly never seen it on TV, but I think mm. I may have rented a couple of them on VHS because I was never out yeah. of the VHS store, that uh, television store in the town, in the little town where I, where I grew up. I was never out of there. I would rent practically anything, and I'm sure that I rented this. This is how the episodes trickled out in the UK. A select number of them were available as rental cassettes, so three, sometimes wow. four per tape, with wow. some pretty grisly sleeve art there. And I don't think they ever got to above like four or five volumes. All of the anthology shows sort of came out in the same way. So I can't remember which ones I saw, which ones I didn't. But immediately yeah. when I started watching these episodes, Wendy, something about the feel of it, I thought, you know what? I, re I remember seeing this and I remember not getting it and not appreciating it. But coming back to it now, at this age, with a love mm -hmm. of vintage TV, and also I'm much more into horror than I used to be too. I used to be, I used to be a little bit of a scaredy cat. I'd been terrified, Ian, by my my stepbrother, my elder stepbrother, who when the video nasties were all around, so, and the uh, for example, The Exorcist, you couldn't get that on VHS. It was banned. You couldn't get The Evil Dead. You couldn't get. Yeah. I spit on your grave, all these movies. But my stepbrother knew people who knew people and would get all these video <laughs> nasties. And I would, I'd have to watch them all go to bed when I was about 10, <laughs> you know? So I saw all these movies and it shot my nerves to shit for several years. So I couldn't watch any of that stuff without oh, being wow. absolutely terrified. 
Wow. That is, that is pretty young to be seeing The Exorcist, definitely. It, it was. It. Yeah, 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 it was. I saw it when I was 15. I loved it. It scared, scared the crap out of me when I was 15. Yeah. Well, it's, it's now one of my favourite movies. But I was, dead against, I was dead against horror, though, as a genre. I, I wasn't particularly interested in it. It didn't stimulate, stimulate me, and I found a lot of its cornerstones, cliches, that just, that just didn't work for me, Nikki. I, I think you, know, you could say, well, Doctor Who, my favourite TV show, has got that sort of seam of horror running through it, but it's a very particular kind of horror. It's a very... It's a safe kind kind of horror when you grow up with mm. a show like that in Britain. This being a late night cable show is a different animal altogether. The mm. stories, I've got a list here of the writers who supplied stories for Tales for the Dark Side in Stephen King, King, Harlan Ellison, Clive Barker, Michael yeah. Bishop, Robert Block, the great Robert Block, uh, Michael McDowell and Frederick Brown, uh, uh, named writers whose stories were picked up and, and turned into episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. But a number of them were completely original. And the one, the first one we're going to talk about on this show is uh, The New Man. And we've got a synopsis for this. This is The New Man episode. This is episode one of the actual show. So after the pilot and the, uh, the synopsis is that Alan Coombs is a bad tempered recovering alcoholic. And he meets Jerry, a young boy who claims to be his son. Coombs insists that he's never seen or met Jerry before, but Jerry and Coombs' own family say otherwise, eventually driving Coombs to complete madness. This is based on a short story by Barbara Owens. This is exactly as I remember it, Wendy. Uh, cheap, cheap scares... Yep. with the acting turned up to 11, kind of, Nikki, just as you were saying about Spinal <laughs> Tap. So Coming back yeah. to it after all these years, Wendy, was this the first time you'd seen one an episode in a while? Absolutely, yes. It, I watched um, two episodes today, and this this was one, and uh, it, it had been absolute ages since I'd seen them, but they were instantly familiar in tone um, yeah. for the type of stories that they used to do. And as you said, sort of cheap scares, um, a sort of a low-rent Twilight Zone type thing. Um, but they were nonetheless quite, they did leave you quite sort of freaked out a little bit at the end, you know. Um, th this one wasn't particularly scary, but it was it was fascinating because you were kind of trying to figure out which side was going to be the real side and which side was going to be the the sort of alternate universe or whatever, you know. I mean, it was it was sort of teasing a little bit you know with the story um but i i thought this was very clever uh in how they they sort of i won't say how but in so, sort of how they finished the story off i thought was because the was principle nice little... i've just watched obviously just watched these two episodes and it does seem to be the general oh, yeah. sort of conceit of it is that there's a, a there's a a positive and a negative universe almost and that things cross mm. over bet between the two break into our reality from somewhere mm. else and sort of gradually drive people nuts of the two episodes that we watched this one this one's really stayed with me and i mm. don't know why i don't know why because it, the acting as I said, was almost <laughs> almost over the top i'm going to be kind to the actors because i thought they did on the page, there probably wasn't a great deal there, Ian. And I think mm. you could see them working hard with it to connect with the characters and communicate them in really quite a short screen time. But it did stay with me. You're smiling. I mean, how did this affect you? <laughs> I, do, I, do you I watched, I, to a point, I, it, you watching stuff like this, this was in the 80s, right, this show? 1984, I, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. watching the tone and the, the, the way it's shot always takes me back to the 80s, uh, a very simpler time um and and it and made me smile but let's face it it was it had no twist at the end it was it, it, it i mean it wasn't even as half as good as some of the stories in the twilight i zone. think there I is mean, a twist at the end it's just you well, can't understand what it is <laughs> no <laughs> no no but the thing the thing is though no, I mean, I mean, we can't, not you. I mean, oh, you, you, yeah. it's, um, it's yeah. deliberately, it's it's, it's absolute nonsense odd. and deliberately yeah. nonsense. But but yeah, yeah, but the thing, <laughs> the thing is though, the difference between the Twilight Zone and this one is that the Twilight Zone pride themselves on the twists in the story, like that Burgess mm. Meredith one, where you know the the world ends and he can read all the books and his glasses smashes. Do you know what I mean? What a great mm -hmm. twist! This one, yeah. 
He's just drunk with boot polish on his face. I, I don't understand. You know, there was, the no, there was no, there was no twist. The difference there was no, is Ian, that, yeah. that is that the Twilight Zone was a liter, a very literate show, mm. a high quality show. Mm-hmm. It knew and uh, it had a, a that purpose behind it. Whereas mm. the purpose of this was cheap thrills for people who were half drunk. Or for <laughs> Before they went to bed, <laughs> and I think that's absolutely. I think that's fine. I think it's, there's no problem at all that this show knows what it's doing. I think that I mean, looking no, at the and, stills and, that we've got on screen at the moment, yeah. they, it looks like a set from a music video. It's it, that minimal. It's that it, stripped back. Yeah, it did. I understand what they were doing, and I understand they had a limited budget and stuff like that. It's, but I mean, the acting is okay. You know, it's slightly yeah, it's okay. over the top and stuff like that. But it's the it's the storytelling I find I found a bit um, poor. As I said, you know, you, I was expecting something it's clunky, isn't it? Clunky. Of, of yeah, of a yeah. twist at the ending. Um, you know, and the boy comes in and says, "Can I speak to my dad?" And he's over there and stuff like. You know what I mean? You could have guessed that was going to happen, but there was no resolution for this guy at all. And I felt really, I felt sorry for him. Tell you the truth, after well, yeah. so many years of battling, and then suddenly he's back there with no explanation. No, um, nobody believes him. Do you know what I mean? And so I just. Well, I, th- no, I, I think know. that the titling of the series is very mm. telling, and they yeah. are very dark. Um, there's well, no... well, the boot polish they put on his face was quite dark. Let's yeah. face it. <laughs> <laughs> they, I think this they, was they don't one get, afternoon. There are no happy of endings, course. you know, so no. it, it's an interesting um, take. And, and like you were mm. saying, in with the original Twilight Zone, those were, were really um, eloquently done you know those those were just so well done most of them and the and these were were very very sort of low rent versions of that but they still at the time provided a certain level of entertainment um in the genre you know Mm. so the one thing i found with these types of series though is i couldn't watch them every single week because i would find them a little bit too dark um, like you, you would get it depend. It would depend on the story, but I'd have to like take a break mm. from them because they're like too depressing sometimes. Whereas I can watch loads and loads of horror movies, and I love horror movies. Um, but like these stories were, um, some of them were really, really hard to watch at times. Yeah, I, yeah. I, found, I found this intense. Those two. I found this in, intense in places. And as a father, Nikki, you know, I can't mm. pretend this didn't freak me out. You know, I, I've got three boys. I remember when they were that age. And, you know, this kid comes in and I think, oh, it's a child who's looking looking for his father. And with every little twist of this you know, lean story, the episodes are only 22 minutes long. That's all mm. you get of actual drama. It did it did pull me in. How about you? Um. Well, I'm I'm sort of in the same camp as Ian, really. So um, I love anthology shows. I was more or less brought up on them because they were a bit of a um, well, there were a lot of anthologies geared at kids in the in the nineties. I used to watch Nickelodeon had um, Are You Afraid of the Dark, which I still yep. think is a oh, superb yeah. series. Mm. Um, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Well, obviously, the, the sex, success of Goosebumps, the books, and the TV series. Yeah, Goosebumps was um, good. And and they did a kids' version of Tales from the Crypt as well. I seem to recall. Oh, really? I used to watch. I, I think that one Nickelodeon as well. Um, and recently, I've rewatched all the Twilight Zones from the original Rod Serling ones all the way to the latest ones that Jordan Peele's done in the movies and everything. And out to limits, I've. I've uh, Where'd you, you find know, the time? So, so you're, you're a fan. You're a fan. I'm a fan of anthologies, but I think there's there's some things you watch, and whether it's a time or place thing or what mood you're in. I, I mean, I've watched more than than uh, Ian. I've, I've I've watched the whole first season and a bit of the second series, and because I'm a completist, I will go to finish the rest. But I struggled. I really struggled watching mm. them. I found the I think because she gets you know like Twilight Zone with the plots. I mean, the plots are always tight in the Is it Twilight similar Zone. to? Is it's... it similar though to what Wendy was saying about they are much of a muchness? I mean, mm. I've just watched these two, and the, yeah. and we'll come to the second one in a short while. But the themes and the end result is 
largely the same. And I've read a few of the synopsis for other episodes mm. and a great many of them are kind of similar to a man sort of getting driven to driven to the brink of insanity or, or worm, a woman being driven to the brink of insanity. Yeah. That seems to be quite a, a long running theme. So there's only so much you can watch of, of that, yeah. that I mean, mode. I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I don't think that, I think there is a good variance. There is a, okay. um, there, there is quite different storylines and some are more comedic in nature. Um, I think the new man arguably, arguably was probably the best of the ones that I watch because I do think the concept of this sudden having this child mm. invading it, it is a scary concept, but overall I struggle to find the the true horror of this series. Mm. Things that make me tense yeah. and make me want to watch more because this um, is psychological horror though. In this instance, it's not a body horror. It's not. No, it's, it's not jump scares. It's a, it's a psychological fear. Mm -hmm. The idea, you know, for example, yeah. somebody who's raised children. The, yeah. you, you couldn't possibly turn away a child who wanted who wanted your support, your affection. It was calling you, you daddy. Yeah, yeah no, I, I totally get that. And obviously, you know, I mean, we've done that sort of cuckoo line in in, in sort of um, Doctor Who as well, where we've had the, the episode where the, there were a child that were an alien and a human family were raising it, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's been done many times. I think the trouble is, is probably I've seen it done better. Um, and and to a point where it makes me want to want to watch it more. But again, like I said, it's you know, Dick Van Dyke show is probably one of the most successful comedies in America, mm. and I suffered for all six seasons of that, and I only laughed once. And I think it, I think it was <laughs> that's desperation. No, that's you that's a completist for you. But I I really rolled with the punches with this. The, the, there was only twenty two minutes of it, and mm. I I went through the full scale of emotions watching this. Mina. So at one point, I thought that this that this guy that the lead character Jerry was a disgraceful a disgraceful man who didn't deserve his family, and then I felt sorry for him, and then I went back mm -hmm. again and then back again I, and the fact that it had got me at sea like that it it really did disturb me and I, I was still thinking about the episode 24 hours later how does this chime with your memories of watching tales from the dark side because i know that you watched it 20 years ago as well did you enjoy this one had you seen this before what do you think of the new man i just honestly it's not for me there's no deep analysis in this i just i just see it as just a series that is like a cheesy kind of horror. It's just yeah. I, I I find it to be experimental, not mm. really yeah. aiming for something like the Twilight Zone, uh, something that's more polished or more psychological. Mm. So I just enjoyed it what it is at, at that moment. Let it be um, because uncomfortable because it's not just the the psychological thing that affects you is it's how uncomfortable it makes you this mm. episode it just kind of makes you uncomfortable but not something that's traumatic or something that makes you think so i think i find this to be just in a ex, ex, just experimental i mean there um there are movies that are just you know just a slasher film and i just watch it just a slasher film i don't like overanalyze i don't mm. I don't really put much thought into it because I know what the what the purpose of the director and what's his target aud audience. Once you know the tar ta target audience and the purpose <laughs> of the director, este, well, it may that's... amuse you to know, Mina, that for this episode of Fluff, and it, and it is Fluff, and I, I agree with you. I, I think that was entirely the intention behind this, and I think that the that desire to entertain is a noble intention and i i loved it for that but people have gone to great lengths to sort of explain this episode in particular there are a number of theories about the new man aiming from the idea that the concept that uh, jerry was an allegory the little boy was an allegory for all the pain and torment that alan had been causing his family so that's like really esoteric and, mm. and literate and yes. really quite really quite unlikely i think perhaps another giving one. it a bit more credit <laughs> yeah there's another one here wendy that says that jerry the little boy is meant to be the personification of booze and deliberately trying to so that's his alcoholism tempting him back over and over again but i think my mm. favorite of the of the theories that i've read about this one ian is mm. that um 
Sharon, who's uh, Jerry's wife, who's really at the end of her tether with this guy who's been in and out of alcoholism for, for years. So Sharon wants to end her marriage to Alan. So she teams up with Jerry's boss and they hire Jerry, who's a child actor. They hire this child actor to slowly push Jerry back over the edge. <laughs> but surely he would have had the mother would have had pictures of um of Jerry when he was born and could have shown it to her husband and stuff like that. It's just you know, I mean, I understand it's 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 well, a it's a low It's one of the many thing. conveniences, I think, Ian, mm. of the fact that she's oh, you know, a lot of my a lot of my uh belongings mm. are uh they've been packed, they're in storage, I'm waiting to visit my sister or whatever else. <laughs> Look, there's nothing in that family home at all. Yeah, there are no exactly. ornaments, there are no rugs, yeah. there are no clothes hanging up, there's nothing. It's all it's not the fact that it was. I mean, it, it was. It was okay. It was what it was watchable, but um, yeah, I I, you know, it. personally, I prefer more more to stories than that. And you know, the the low budget thing is no excuse for good writing. And I think the writing in this was 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 you know was below below par in yeah, my opinion. Average, you know, because it didn't it didn't really have any. Maybe it's not supposed to have a twist, but but you know, like when they write, you know, when people I think, write I'm thinking something, when, when they've only got not... twenty two minutes to turn in a story like this and have it, yeah, but but Doctor Who to do it all the time. It, <laughs> no, that's what I mean. Though, for, yeah. To turn a story like this to that time limit and mm. to deliver a story with any kind of elegance about it, with a, with a natural flow, you have to have. I think you have to be a better, perhaps a better writer or the people yeah. who are adap adapting them mm. either needed more time or, or just need to be more sets of eyes on the script to, to just make it flow better. You can see that it needs some TLC. Right, I, I, I said, I, sorry. Um, no, go ahead, Ian. No, I, as I said, right, you know, I enjoyed it up to a point, but um, for me personally, I thought it was, it was, as I said, the writing wasn't very good. And at the ending, it didn't, re it didn't resolve anything. You know, I mean, he just he basically smashed up the kid's room and, and he opens a drawer and there's a drink in there and he just starts drinking and suddenly he's got all his boot polish on his face. And then that's the end. And it's like, well, you know, there's no, there's, there was a, there was a beginning, there was a middle, but there was no end. Do you know what I mean? Where, it was just, where yeah, the kid, just, where the kid got that bottle of whiskey from? That's what I want to know. No, which, well, I don't which, know. Which off license served him that? I think we need to know these things. <laughs> oh, what's yeah, that it's... guy who keeps drinking? He goes, oh, we've had some really good sales. Do you want to drink with me? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I don't. Well, I drink for both of us. <laughs> I, I did enjoy it, though. Let's go and take, go and check in with the people on the other channel and see if any of them are, are remembering this show based on, on uh, our review of this first episode. <laughs> uh, let's see what we've got here. We have uh, uh, lots of comments about uh, scary TV shows and scary and scary adverts. Not sure what we're what we're kicking up. Let's have a look. Uh, I don't think. Oh, Sfeela Betkin says I don't think it was on late. I think it was uh, like Prisoner Cell Block H would have been on around eleven thirty. Uh, followed by Married with Children and, and then this. So they're in that block of shows. Mm. So I would have gone to bed after Prisoner Cell, got, Cell Block H. Love that show. Yeah. Video nasties. I remember that, video nasties. People comparing notes as well about how scary the uh, the Exorcist was. It's the scariest movie ever made. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. And being it a Catholic is. doesn't make it any better either when you're watching it. If you're a Catholic, it just makes you feel even worse. It's even more terrifying, yeah. <laughs> but even when that was the thing about that film, even you didn't need to be a Catholic to find it terrifying. And that was the mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. scary thing about it. It would start making you believe... Yeah. That, you know that there is you know a devil <laughs> you know you watch that film and it it you're not the same after you watch it i love it yeah. we've got a comment here from disaster area talking about the writing i think Ian, that it says mm. that it's easier to cut stuff out rather than to power an episode mm. yeah mm. maybe i said I don't, I don't know if the if um they cut things out of this episode i said it seems very incomplete to me that that the first episode new man but you know that's what i think doesn't matter what i think does it i've just said i've just said i've just a bit of an interesting thought because dan had said earlier on about how it stayed with him and, and, and the more thought about it the more scared he became mm. afterwards mm. now when i watched it i started with the pilot and um, and binge watched uh mm. the first season so i didn't have time mm -hmm. in in many ways to have that time to sit and think about that specific episode because I'd gone on to a new story. But obviously, in the time it was on, uh, mm. you would have watched it weekly. 
So you yeah, wait yeah. that week to process it. And mm. similarly, when I were a kid, there was an adult show called Monsters. I don't know if anyone remembers this, an anthology show called Monsters. I think so. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that came was, out with VHS tapes as well. And it was slightly humorous sometimes or whatever. And and I remember, I, was, I wasn't terrified of it, but I do remember the, the one particular episode, which was a rip-off of uh, The Thing. And it, it made me cry. I sobbed tears, not because I was scared, yeah. because the storyline was so sad. And the more yeah. I thought about it, the sadder I became. And I remember I was inconsolable by the time mum got me to bed because uh, my parents used to work quite liberal and let me watch mm. things. I've shown but see, watch. That's the thing you see in those days, I mean, Nikki. Thing. You had to wait a week for the next episode. So yeah. you are, you're right. You, have to pro- you can process it. You've got that week to process what you've seen, you know. Yeah. Binge, yeah. binge. I mean, I'll mon- tell you. Yeah, monsters were quite cheap as well. Is well, yeah. so, you know, so yeah. it's we've the same got, thing. We've got lots of people who are watching who clearly haven't, can't remember this show, but are talking about mm. all the other anthology shows that we've mentioned mm. too. So people are comparing notes about their favourites. Vanessa Law says, "I don't remember this show at Nor all." Do I. I think Wayne Peters does. He says that it's got strong Gareth Marenghi vibes. <laughs> I know, I know what you no. mean, Wayne. I yeah. think you're onto something there. Uh, uh. Blue Bonnet Hoovian, he's here. <laughs> Hi, Blue. She says, "My favourite tales of the Dark Side episode stars Jerry Stiller, yep. and it's called mm. The Devil's Advocate." Do you remember that one, Mina? Yep. You ever seen that one? Yep. I I remember Jerry Stiller, but I'm mm. not sure if it's the same episode. No, that's not it. I remember mm. there was there was one episode. It wasn't him that would makes it like a a pack with the devil. And mm. um, I think it was a writer and he had to like sacrifice. Uh, I remember he had animals in cages and those animals in cages was used to sacrifice. But the one that I mentioned to you, Dan, that was the one that uh, I, for- I forgot the name of it was the a writer, a spinal writer who um, bought a coffin and inside the coffin there was a vampire and that, that vampire sounds cool was like like some kind of his, his muse or something like that i mean those are bits and pieces that that's cool about. yeah mm. it's kind of a cool concept i'll yeah. tell you what scared me when i was a kid though and um my mum, we, my mum and dad used to watch a show and it went through to 12 o'clock i think i was like <laughs> four well, i think it was 14. and then when we used to switch swap over to the itv the Avengers had just finished. And I don't know if you remember the, the, the end credits of the Avengers where this guy had cards and he, he'd f- f- feel like that and mm. the credits would be on. That used to scare me for some reason. A guy with cards on, on the... I don't know. Do you remember the, the, the end? I think it's a combination of, sh- mm. of, uh, of mood and music that made yeah. some shows oh, scary. I think the Avengers is a prime example because yeah. obviously the characters in that were quite avuncular. There was nothing to really yeah. to be afraid of on the surface, but it was just made to such a high quality by talented mm. directors and with a lot of the uh, of the TLC and the, the simple time and budget that a show like this wouldn't wouldn't have had, so they had to resort to um, yeah. some pretty extreme means to to chill you in in twenty two minutes. And we've got another one here from Carol Jude who says, uh, "Any U.S. folks remember ABC's Tuesday Night Movie? Yeah, don't look in the basement and Bad Ronald. That's double Dutch to me, Wendy. But you're saying yes. What's this? What I remember." Um, is that we used to have um, like different, you know, days of the week, they'd have different types of movies on and things like that. It's been absolutely ages. Mm -hmm. But um, the first one that Carol Jude mentioned definitely rings a bell. The second one, not so much, but don't look in the basement, definitely Mm -hmm. rings a bell. Mm. It's scary TV, movie. but you yeah, know what? Right, the Americans used to have that. We used to have um, Tales from the Unexpected, didn't we? Do you remember how yeah, how cheap was Tales of the Unexpected man. compared to the Americans? Ten when o'clock they on a it? Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. 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 Again, you, no. again, three, always three wall sets. Yes, always yeah. twists that you could see coming. You could usually yeah. see where the twist was coming to by the ad break, couldn't you, Nikki? Did you ever watch those? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. Yeah, eleven seasons. Um, no oh one my always... God! This guy's he, a monster. <laughs> he is a completist. The guy is is an absolute uh, absolute monster when it comes to devouring TV Watch shows. It, yeah. 
come to the right <laughs> show. You've come to the right show. And Terry on Tuesday, it says, remember, ITV's uh, Armchair um, yes. Theatre. Oh, my Scary God. Just, yeah, the the beginning out. scene with the blood on the chair and stuff, that used to scare yeah. me as a kid, man. I've oh. been tempted to get the box mm. set of those because Network have currently got them on offer on DVDs, quite cheap for about 70 episodes or something stupid. Mm. Stuff is, is that, yeah, people. And Peter Harrington is chipping in there. Is that the one with the scary armchair? A thriller. Mm. Thriller was by Brian Clements, the Avengers guy, wasn't it? That's yes. another great show. Yeah. And uh, Peter Harrington mentions Journey into the Unknown as well. I haven't seen that one. Don't know what that is. May have to look it up. Let's head back to the main channel and talk about the uh, the second episode that we've been watching and see if, see how this fared in. See if you like this one any better. Okay. We also we also looked at episode eleven of season one. All a clone by the telephone. Yes, that's genuinely <laughs> what it was called. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is about... Uh, <laughs> I know, Ian. But you might have been able to re relate to this one. Check it out. Meek, struggling screenwriter. You must have been a meek, <laughs> struggling screenwriter at some point in your career back in the day. Uh, Leon is contacted by his own answering machine, which happens to come from an alternate universe. Making it known how immensely strong-willed it is, the machine speaking in Leon's own voice gradually begins to take over his life eventually leon lashes out at the machine and shuts it off but uh, this ends up sending the machine's own friends after him so it's that whole sort of techno fear thing and it works its way through to the most outrageous conclusion uh this episode this episode probably is at the other end of the spectrum for me yeah. it made me laugh quite a lot it's got yes. the bloke from gremlins in Playing Dick his, Miller. His agent. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Dick he's Miller. a I, I like marvelous that. actor. Mm. I like that mm. a lot. And I do like the old old tech. So I like the the, uh, the push button yeah. phone. Receiver yeah. phone. And the Fantastic. old answering machine with that sort of wood effect. You know, I thought this was actually directed probably better than the first one. But because mm. it did it did heighten tension at some point, but I, I thought it was all so ridiculous so outlandish that I just ended up laughing a lot all the way through it and by the end of it just thinking oh whatever I'll go with it and I still I still enjoyed it Mina I did <laughs> I did, I did. It, it's ridiculous that's what I'm saying like why do I keep holding my socks um I I think... get me socks let go <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'm just gonna throw you I think that when you don't think about it so much and you see that the just I guess laughing with it, yes. Because it's so outlandish. That's the word I'm looking for, and it's. And I think my my favorite part was when um, he disconnected the machine, and the voice came out as what's her name? It was Barbara something? The woman's voice. Yeah, he's and, engaged to be married, isn't he? To his his uh, fiance. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like. Uh, um, Call this number in need of an emergency, something like that. Because that's that's before he said that that all his friends are gonna go after him. Mm. I thought I thought that was so funny, but, but it's not it's not supposed to be like scary. It's just it's just an, an uncomfortable uh, situation, but yet it's it's laughable. It's just it's just ludicrous. Well, this one had an outside shot in it. Unlike the first one, oh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, did. yeah, it did, didn't it? So they they, they mm. <laughs> kind of stretched it a bit, didn't they? They kind of like let's do an outside shot. It could have been filmed around the back of the bins. <laughs> yeah, of the exactly, studio. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, these yeah. are an episode we 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 are uh, a better cast as well. Like you said, the uh, the guy from Gremlins and yeah. Harry Anderson, who was uh, telephony while well, I remember mm. him from the original It uh, mm. with Tim Curry. Uh, he was ah. one of the kids from that. Uh, well, he was a grown up. Uh, yeah. yeah. He was it's also um, the judge in Night Court, yeah. the yes. comedy Night Court as well. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Um, wait, what? Who was Harry. He? he was, was no, it no, Harry? No, no, no. Uh, judge in, Stone. In it, in it, in the Terry series, Terry movie series. Oh, yeah. Who? He was Who? The, uh, the comedian one. The comedian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He passed away. He passed away yeah. shortly. Uh, yeah, he was in the TV on the TV movie series of uh, Pennywise, right? With um, yeah, Tim Curry. Ah, Tim Curry, okay. yeah. I just didn't recognize him without the. It's really funny because you can tell it's the same studio. So that that shot with right. Dick Miller is the same studio as the 
as the oh, guy the first was, episode. Yeah, Jake, yeah, the first episode, <laughs> and then this one's like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, the same believe set. Not, believe it or not, I didn't notice at the time, but now yeah. you've said that, I think it, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, it's the same window and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but as I say, you could tell it's low budget. But this one was was um, amusing. And uh, it was quite it's quite enjoyable and very silly ending as well. Mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as if he would get as if he would give in to it. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and he starts typing. He's, like, he's, the he's, type a writer. he's a struggling writer at the start, but it turns out that the yeah. answer machine can do his job better than he can. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, he yeah, sort yeah. takes over his professional life, tries to sort of run his his uh, love life too, sort of proposes to his girlfriend for him, and the guy the guy just in the end just completely gives over his life to this answering machine. So it's it is absolutely ridiculous but yeah with, with a wink with a wink mm. i i was wondering were they i mean were they obviously trying to say that the voice in the answering machine was an alternate universe version of him well, where, where he was he was more Wendy. he was like confused. more outgoing but it it was confusing because at times mm. you'd think why would he be so mean well there was to no himself, visual, you know what i mean why would no he visual... behave like that proof there was no evidence there was no yeah. line through they just tell you that this is or suggest that alternative universes are involved somehow but you've got no way of sort of yeah. visibly seeing that or even really hearing it it's just something that's spoken you, you just have to sort of go with it because again it's only 22 minutes and and if <laughs> i think if you if you press play on a show like this you have mm. to be willing it's like it's like turning up to a party and be and being ready for the party with uh with ideally with a couple of drinks already inside you and and your the trainers on that you don't mind getting somebody else dropping booze on if you if you're there for this kind of party you've got to just just run with the craziness of it all and uh, yeah so I, I didn't i i'm getting the impression Ian, that you enjoyed this one more than the first one i didn't enjoy it I anywhere did. near as much but I, but um i did i, I did I, like I, it i did again. i did i enjoyed this one um better it was it was it was amusing and it was silly Again, you know, the ending was very, very daft. Um, but um, uh, it always makes me laugh because I said um, he was typing on a typewriter, which, you know, <laughs> I remember typewriters. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, you know how hard it is to actually write in a typewriter and to get every word yeah, right. Do, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, ch -ch 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 -ch. oh, crap. You know, get the tipex out. <laughs> get rid of that letter. <laughs> do you remember that? Um, but yeah, no. And also um, the, the, the uh, actually answer machine itself takes me back as well because I remember... I think my gran had an answer machine like that. It just yeah, looked like that, yeah. But when he says like alternate that. universe, I think what he means is that that thing, maybe in the alternate universe, um, electronics are alive or something. I don't know. I think that's what he meant. Not so him. No idea what they meant by mm. it all. They they don't seed it in any way, and there are no there are no clues. There's nothing to pick up on. There just isn't any time. So I think all it relies on us as viewers to do, Nikki. Just the same as I was talking about with the first episode is to kind of put yourself in the place of that lead character and you either connect with him and feel what he's going through. So it puts a lot on it puts a lot on the shoulders and the ability of the central actor in a show like this. And so you can either connect with him or you don't. And so the tw this 22 minute episode either works for you or it doesn't. And it's largely because I think of the, of the actor, how well they do that job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. I mean, I, what I found, what well, my opinion of, of like all the stories I've seen is that some, like a new man, you can see where they're going with in terms of a story. But there are some episodes where you feel like these events have just happened. You, you can't see, other than the fact that you're watching these events, it's like watching someone's life like Big Brother. It just happens yeah. and there's no cause or effect or... Or you know, there's no mischievous something that's, that's that's affecting this, or it just seems to occur. You know, it's like there's one episode, and he's got a really good actor in um, whose name's escapes me right now. Uh, he's been in all sorts of things, and he uh, in this episode he was gifted a uh, computer, uh, which he was planning to write his first successful novel on. But he discovered that if he typed something. Like, uh, like he typed something about his wife and then deleted it and his wife disappeared. And <laughs> that's a bit and like word processor of the gods. That's a Stephen King. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but the thing is, we, we've seen that story a million times. And normally yeah. when you see that story, 
Mm. It's usually the writer ends up causing mm. more trouble for himself to the yeah. point that he writes himself a spot and it usually either he reverts it all back to normal or mm. he gets destroyed in some way. But yeah. at the end of this episode, he ends up with everything he ever wanted from what he typed before the machine broke. And I thought, so what, what point? So there's no moral the... tail in that. There's no there's, there's no consequence. Well, well, he's, but, he's walked yeah. away happy. He's got a beautiful wife for his dream. The son who he always wanted to was See, going I'm somewhere getting the impression life. that this show is not, if not deliberately absurd, then maybe they're pulling stories from different directions because other anthology shows, they've got an editorial line, haven't they? A, a, a mm. voice and there's a purpose behind I don't think he got the, what he the wanted, actual though. show. Whereas this is just in that 22 minutes just to entertain and, mm. and that is, and that is that I wouldn't say you haven't got to not think about it at all but I, th I think that they don't really care whether they whether they are consistent or not by the sounds of it by by week to week just the fact that they send you to bed feeling maybe a little bit chilled for that week and perhaps you've forgotten about it by the time the next one rolls around whereas now when you buy things like this in a box set you can you can watch seven or eight or more at a time. Nick, it sounds like you've watched about twelve at a time to get through them like that. But <laughs> and you can but you can burn through episodes now, one after the other, one after the other. You can probably what I'm saying is you can probably see the uh, the frame, the framework of yeah. it a little more. You can see things coming a little more. Um, and so when when something happens, sort of left a field. Did you mm. watch the movie though? No, no, I'm definitely going to watch the film. I'm definitely going to watch the film soon. In fact, we may do a follow-on well, episode more money into it. about the movie. Yeah, it's got some big actors in it in some of their earliest oh, roles. So yeah, we're going to take we're going to take a look. Yeah. We're going to take a look at that. It's um, yeah, it came out in 1990, and this is the poster. So it is available yeah. on DVD and everything else. And uh, yeah, it's got George R uh, Romero again oh, involved yeah. and Stephen King, and That's it was directed poster. by John Harrison. Stars Christian Slater, Debbie Harry. And I believe uh, Julia Julia Moore's in it in her very first movie role, but I've not I've not seen it, so I don't know. What um what's what year was that made in? Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Oh, okay. Debbie Harry, cool. um, aka Blondie, she mm. plays a witch. No uh, surprise. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> Have you? A witch who it's like the Hansel and Gretel kind of witch. Mm. Um, I, it's kids. sorry, go on. Ah, no, no, no. Go ahead, Nikki. I was just going to say, I, I, it's, only, it's only as I've just read the description now. I've mm -hmm. seen this years ago and not realised it was a part of um Yeah, I think I that. rented that on, on video years yeah, ago as well. Yeah, I, I have definitely seen that film. Yeah. But I've, talking, I've of, talking about films, I mean, th this particular episode of, of Tales from the Dark Side with that terrible, <laughs> that terrible porn all the clone <laughs> by the telephone, <laughs> that actually reminded me of another film from uh, from the eighties that I was absolutely mad about. I'm talking about Electric Dreams starring Lenny oh, Van Dolan, nice. also Sorry. from 1984. So I don't know if there'd have been any cross pollination between the two because I think they'd have probably been in production around the same I've time. I've seen that once. Yes, yeah, that a, film in the movie. cinema. That's the only time I've ever seen it in the cinema. I've um, seen it in Donkey's years. I remember. No, have I? In the scene where he's like uh, on the on the. Um, motorway thing and, and the signs are changing yeah to send messages to him yeah. and stuff like that yeah the junior madison yeah. plays the girl who lives upstairs from him she's plays, gorgeous plays the cello mm. wasn't the film just written to promote the song i'm sure i've read that i don't, I don't know, if I've know. That up there, but i'm sure so i'm not sure about that i mean it was the age where the soundtrack did sell a ton there's an entire mm. soundtrack album with uh, George Road and Philip Oakley on it, obviously yeah. everybody knows that. But yeah, Boy yeah. George and people like that were on it too. So it's a big, big movie. But it was also about a guy who is a struggling professionally, and uh, who uh, who buys a computer, and the computer starts to try to run his life for him. So it's a similar thing, but it's just a bit of a. It has got a dark side to it. That film has, but not as dark. <laughs> Nowhere near as dark as this. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't dark this episode this episode was funny it was, it was fun it was black yeah, i think was black funny. comedy that's yeah. what i would uh, what i would call mm. this black comedy yeah, but the thing is he didn't get what he wanted basically it's like you know careful what you he wish did, for but he had, he had might, to share it that's though, what i'm saying he? yeah it's like that isn't it so he, he basically yeah he's basically under the thumb now of the uh talking yeah. machine isn't he um, yeah, but he's got what he wanted which is which is, you know, to be a, a, a writer, but he's not in control. So, oh, okay. So that's, what, that's a good episode for Chibnall. 
Now obviously available for work and yeah, yeah. Perhaps, that's, perhaps that. that's what happened to him. He got, uh, he had a woke machine that told him what to write. Maybe that's that's what happened. No, so it was, I don't know. It was a, a Thasman machine with the with a bunch of stands that press a button. It's like yas queen and another button. <laughs> well, uh, tales from tales from the dark side. Obviously, it's a show that a lot of people have got a lot of fond memories of. People who grew up with it or people who maybe were at a particular point in their lives where it was just on at the right time for them. And, and mm. In the same way, as somebody in the chat earlier on mentioned Married with Children, it's the, the rabbi, and oh, that America was a show was that came along at that, that time for me, show. watching late night TV. It was on really late night here in the UK, just once once a week at, a, at about oh yeah, half 12, one o'clock in the morning, something I used to set the video for. And I think it ran for about three or four years before satellite picked it up. <laughs> Oh, was, hello. Was, uh, <laughs> that was a good tales from the dark it's side. Back there. Yeah. The answering machines come to take Nikki away. But yeah, unsurprisingly, <laughs> Tales from the Dark Side is available in full as a enormous DVD box set with a nice oh creepy front goodness. cover there. Yeah, that is like and really good. On the strength of this, Mina, I think I'm probably going to go, if I don't go and buy the box set, I may go and try and find it somewhere where it's streaming or whatever else because I did, I really enjoyed this and I would like to see some more. After you haven't seen this uh, for so long, are you going to go back and watch some more? Is it scratched an itch? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I just enjoyed it. I remember maybe, maybe I'm still mentally twelve because that's more like the edge age I was watching it. But it's just I think I enjoy it now more because of the nostalgia. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I. Remember, I mean, I I can't I had my parents, I don't know why they spoiled me so much, but I had cable in my room and it I would watch it. I remember just watching it late at night while my parents were sleeping and just with everything everything quiet, the house quiet and me just watching it with the what you know that ding, ding, ding. it was that music that was scary or some music. most of the time in the actual stories were because that, <laughs> that brilliant sort of theme music and the voiceover yeah. and the voice yeah and and the the images uh has went from light and then it, it, it flips yep. and goes to dark so i really like it i don't know yeah it's it's so, right. so did it bring back lots of memories for you too then wendy Oh yeah, I mean, I can remember watching it and uh, and you know and enjoying it then. Um, I think watching it now, like um, Lena was saying, it's it's great nostalgia to go back mm -hmm. and watch it now. I mean, I saw the actor Vic Tay back in the first one, mm -hmm. um, and he was in he was in so many things. I mean, just it, the list would be endless. But mm -hmm. I can remember him in the original um, Star Trek series of the nineteen sixties. He was in the episode where they um, go to a planet where they've they've found a book about um, Chicago gangsters. Oh yeah, yeah, we you talked know, about that. And, show. Yeah, and he was he was one of the bosses, you know, one of the crime bosses, and he's such a versatile actor. Piece of the action, that's what the episode's called. A piece of the action, yep. Um, and he he's such a versatile actor, and he's he really elevated that story a lot, I think, as well mm -hmm. because. He is the kind of an actor who can who can swing from being very sympathetic to really unpleasant, you know, and we really dislike him. Um, so I think the actors that they chose for a lot of the stories, the guest stars, I think were a lot of the fun of watching those was seeing who was going to pop up in the story. Mm. Yeah, I watched one with Christian Slater in. But I tell you what, I've, I've just remembered this. I read um, that when they aired it in the UK, they added an extra intro with Patrick McNee. Oh. And I'd Absolutely. love to That's see good. a version of that, to see if that makes any difference to the plot when you watch the story, whether mm. Patrick McNee's narration or, or introduction, whether, it's, whether it changes your perception of that episode. Um, I want to see really? if I can find them out. Mm. Yeah, a second mention for uh, Pat Patrick McNee of the Avengers on this, yeah. on this show. You see, he keeps popping up, doesn't he? Mm. Obviously, Nick, you've burnt your way through a season and a half of these, but you're going to do the rest. You're going <laughs> to go back I'm to that, 
I'm a completist. I will do it all before I make final judgment. Uh, I mean, you know, I've seen all 1,200 wave episodes of Dark Shadows twice, so I, yes. I, I can, I can, I can <laughs> do all. Oh, I like Dark Shadows. <laughs> I'm still working my way through the first viewing of it, but I need to get back into it now. I think I stopped. I think I stopped at the first two episodes that was on this show, and that's where I stopped. Oh, <laughs> I nice. really, yeah, I was I'm still watching them, but I haven't watched. I haven't watched any for a few weeks now. I, I've got to pick it back up again because I did really enjoy that, and I, I enjoyed this as well. I think I'm going to certainly going to watch some more. I'm going to see how I get on with the rest of season one, and just watch it here and there. I, I find it handy that they're in such bite-sized chunks like that. The entirety of Tales from the Dark Side is streaming but you'll have to check which platform depending on where you are in the world is wherever you'll you'll find that sort of tucked away you can see what you think and get back to us about it ian what do you think about it is this the kind of thing that you could go back to or is it just something to uh, to tick off and say look i gave that a, i gave that a try i've got t-shirts let's move on well i've got the gump t-shirt but no uh, um, no. <laughs> no yeah yeah it's i gave it a try and it doesn't you know it's it is what just it is you know quite. But, yeah i mean i've I'd rather Doesn't watch, them you Twilight to, to watch no. them. No, but the first two the first two episodes weren't in my opinion were just average or even less than average, especially the first one. But that's just me, right? So Yeah. You know, I wouldn't go back and watch any of them, tell you the truth. Unless I'm forced. Unsurprisingly, well, we may look at the movie at some future point. Mm. On this very show. I think that could be a lot of fun to see where at the other end, where this franchise ended up because that was that was largely you know 30 32 years ago with that big movie but yeah the uh, we mentioned Stephen King earlier on Stephen King's name is also attached to this just as the late George A Romero's is and uh, there's a lot of people who who grew up watching Tales from the Dark Side who are now influential figures either working in TV or they are writers and one person in particular that people may have heard of so the writer the creator of the IDW comic book Lock and Key, which has been turned into mm. uh, quite a successful the team. Son of Stephen King, sure Joe Hill. coming back. Yeah, so this is this is Joe Hill, Stephen King's son. He's nuts about Tales from the Dark Side. And mm. back in 2013, he was actively involved along with uh, Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman. Don't say it. He they, he was involved in a big push to remake Tales from the Dark Side or to to kick it off again, to reboot the idea just as uh, in the same format as an anthology as an anthology show called Dark Side. And the idea was largely the same. It was going to be an ongoing an ongoing series which was going to be in the spirit of the Outer Limits, the Twilight Zone, and that original Tales from the Dark Side. But they were trying to reinvent it in a way that was palatable for a post X Files audience that was used to things being somewhat darker than we've than we've just seen. So less less campy. Joe Hill actually wrote several completed scripts for this show and shopped it around for quite some time. He originally took it to the CW, who at the time they were having massive success with Arrow, obviously, and shows like that. CW turned it down. And they couldn't find any takers, any takers at all for it. It was uh, the pilot that was put together, just never, never got broadcast. It was actually filmed, but it was never broadcast. And the idea sort of slipped away back into mm. development hell. And I understand that Joe Hill is still very fond of it, but seems to have given up on, on ever taking the project to live action because he turned it into another comic book for IDW. So it's a six, mm. six issue comic book that adapted all of the scripts, all of his completed scripts. It's like his dad. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So who knows? I mean, I think it's something anthology shows, they are kind of coming back into fashion. And I think that a show like this could probably find a home on, on some channel like sci fi. Or, well, you know, they have to fill the gaps, don't they? So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it did um, come back. Then I think, I think somebody Google, I think he's also written a couple of episodes of Creep Show. But the series. Oh, yeah. Creep, Creep Show's shows great. about yeah. four seasons yeah, into its new run, isn't it? The series. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I, can see that I think Bill Hill has been involved as well. Mm. I, I think. I'm almost positive. Um, it's it's the, pretty good. The series is pretty good. I like yeah, that's, it. That's on Shudder, isn't it? That's the Shudder show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have to look out for that. It's, it's quite Jack. good, actually. Ooh. It's quite good in, in the fact that... I love it. I love it. 80s style. It's, it's fantastic. The comic style. is. I like it. Creepshow is probably my my favourite horror, horror, 
horror movie. I just mm-hmm. like the concept. I like the the use of lighting and the I just I just like it for the way it is. I just find it it's fun and also it is uh creepy. And um and I when I the series actually surprised me. It's actually not bad. It's actually pretty good. I mean it's I not, constant it's good a, things about this show. Yeah, so it's something that I think we'll have to check out at some point in the future. But let's slip over to a parallel universe right now and uh, catch up with the people who've been watching and listening along to our conversation and see what they've got to say about all of these uh, shivers and, and uh, <laughs> various anthology shows. Uh, the creep show films are great says disaster area yeah yeah and uh people, yeah again we've got lots of mentions for uh, anthology shows both from the past and the present problem being recommends tales from the loop a great modern yeah. sci-fi anthology show that has good great connective tissues mm. I've, I've heard that is a good, uh, a good show yeah yeah <laughs> really based on yeah. art <laughs> mm. Joe Thursby here. I think he's talking to the completist over there who says, I really hope there's an afterlife because it'll take me 60 years to catch up on yeah. everything that, yeah. that I want to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? There's just too much to watch. It's, it's uh, in the old days, three channels, four channels, if we were lucky. Now it's just so many channels, it's ridiculous. Well, Peter mm. Harrington says that we can find Tales from the Dark Side on the horror channel. Yeah. Horror Channel, though, they, they, their quality is really bad. They don't really have HD, so they basically mm, show yeah. the quality is really bad. But anyway, it's been stuck in a that, that channel has been stuck in a rut now for about ten years. Mm. It's less than standard definition. Their program is is the programming is all over the place. Computer yeah. says no. Says disaster area. <laughs> <was talking> about. <laughs> it's about the electric dreams thing we were talking about earlier on. Uh, what else? Uh, Black Christmas disaster area mentions is a great watch every Christmas. That's again, mm. that's a movie again. Don't answer the telephone. We're stirring up lots of memories of other shows once more. Night Court, WKRP, KRP, oh, yeah. watch that. Age yeah. of sitcoms. Love we're KRP. Gonna to, yeah. We're going to have to put Night Court in the mix because I get told about the yeah. show quite a lot. I've never isn't, seen it. Know, nice know nothing co- about it. That was mm. hilarious. I loved isn't that. Isn't it show. coming back? Isn't Night Court coming know. back? I believe so. Recently announced it. Yeah. Mm. I believe so. Mm. People have Dick spotted Miller. Dick Miller. Terry yes. on Tuesday Brilliant. spotted him, and so did Jack Thursby. Dick Miller. What a yeah. great yeah. guy. Absolute legend. A bloke yeah. from Gremlins, as he's known, as he's known to me. So yeah, keep it keep it coming and he was uh, in yeah, t- get in touch. Uh, he got shot by the Terminator. You can't get any oh, more he famous did. than that. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, oh, he's really Just what you see, pal, he says to, yeah. <laughs> says to the Terminator. <laughs> so if, you've enjoyed, if you've enjoyed this and you are tempted to go and check out Tales from the Dark Side, according to Peter there, it is on uh, streaming on the Horror Channel at the moment. Uh, sorry, broadcasting on the Horror Channel. Wow. And I know that it's streaming somewhere, as I said er- earlier on. You have to check as to where and when you can find that. You know, it's, it's out there somewhere. Get in touch if you are a Tales from the Dark Side fan, if you've got a, a favourite episode, or if you go and and uh, check it out based on our recommendation, because I, I would recommend this. It's a soft recommend rather than a hard recommend. But I do recommend that people check this out if you've got that gap in your schedule for 22, 22 minutes of uh, of nonsense and and black comedy and and cheap scares. I think it's it's harmless fun. Nonsense. It's aged it's aged nicely, like all things from the eighties have. But yeah, mm. let us know if you do watch it, and also put in the comment sections any more recommendations for your favourite anthology shows. We'll check out some more of them as we put out more of these shows. And of course, yes, get in touch too with what was your very first DVD. If you can remember, if you can't remember now, and it comes to you at a later date, drop it into the comment section and we may read some of those out too on the next show. Stir your memory. Go and find out, take a picture if you like, and join us in the Spacebooks Facebook group and trade pictures of you if you've still got your very first DVDs just like I have take a picture and prove it let's see how well they're well they're wearing because some of these old discs are proper war horses if they've been watched like 40 oh, yeah. 50 oh, 60 yeah, times yeah. like some of the films <laughs> that i've got it's a miracle that they that they're still working but they are you know it, it is versatile format long live dvd that's what i say i do love a blu-ray of it's course going away soon, isn't so it? so so fond mm. of of dvd thank you to everybody who's been watching along with us who's been in for the duration this time on this trip down hurtle back actually down through parallel dimensions alternative dimensions and and memory lanes that's 
it's uh, another show done, everybody. No idea what we're going to be watching next time, but between us, we'll, we'll figure something out. I think it could be <laughs> something something action-related. Get next smart. Time. Get smart. Get smart. Oh, that was oh, another no. That's another no. American no. thing. I never used to watch no. Get Smart. <laughs> let's, put that on the, let's put that on the list, too. Yeah, we'll do, I think we'll do yeah. UK next time. But I think Get Smart's also going on the list. And Night Court 2. I saw the movie. I think that would be... That would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The movie with Steve Carell and uh, yeah, like Heroes right. is in it, isn't he? Who's, yeah, the girl, yeah. who's the girl in that? And Affaway. And Affaway. Yeah. Oh, I knew it was somebody fit. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed Anna. that. Yeah. Yeah. Fit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah you're, not asked, you're not supposed to say things like that anymore, Dan. Fit, 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 fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh dear. one last reminder. Please like the video if you've enjoyed this. Or even if you haven't, like it anyway. <laughs> you're, you're here now, aren't you? Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You may like the next one even more. So you've got to yeah, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it and hit the little cloister bell so you get the notifications about what we're doing next, what we're dropping next, podcasts, live streams, chit-chat, or the deep and the meaningful. We've got it all covered for you here on the Spacebook. And the Spacebook listed will continue to chart all these TV shows that you may have missed and maybe clock some old favourites. We'll pull in some of those too. Maybe we'll stir some memories. Maybe we'll get you we'll get you hurtling back to your TV and shuffling through those those various apps to find out what is streaming and where. That's the goal of this, to, to make your viewing time, your viewing life, even harder than it already is, just like ours. I hear <laughs> <laughs> so oh have we got it's that time Ian have you got anything you want to plug I know you've been you've been filming in a, in a secret location so you can't say too much about nope. what's going on in the megaverse can you but is there nope. anything you'd like to plug anyway uh, just my channel just go to my channel watch my stuff you know get a like in there a little comment it's a Rebecca Gull channel you know go there and have some fun that's all I can say yep 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 so uh, <laughs> not much to plug really how about you, Nikki? Where can people connect with you? Because you're on you're on social media, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on social media on Facebook, Twitter, usual. How? How, um, Nikki? You you watching too many shows? How do you find the time to actually do anything? I, because <laughs> because I don't I don't actually use social media. <laughs> I've signed up to it, and I well, a million people, but I actually rarely go on it. Um, but yeah, no to plug at minute. Um, uh, yeah, no to plug. I'm just gonna go back to the dark. Dark side, I think. Dark side. <laughs> Enjoy the ride with the dark oh, side. Oh, I used to have one of those. But like, that's what fell earlier. Back in the day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mina, where can people connect with you on social media? Where are you at the moment? I don't know. I'm just there. You're there everywhere. <laughs> I'm there everywhere. everywhere. She's out I'm there somewhere. I'm everywhere. I'm, uh, I'm uh, at Twitter. Mm -hmm. Melina Vader, I have a YouTube, which I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do with that YouTube. Um, I'm with Chris uh, Christian, the legend of the traveling TARDIS, which I just found out that I'm going to be <laughs> there tonight. I had no idea that was going to happen. Oh, dear. <laughs> I just fall found asleep. I, <laughs> listen, for the record, I wasn't bored or anything like that. I was just really tired. It's just I know. We know. We know you Vance, didn't sleep last night. Vance's voice is so soothing. Like, she just talks, and I'm like, ah. Oh. And then <laughs> of that, like, so the AC on is still, you know, but, but what was going to say? Oh, yeah, and you can find me on that that, that mad Irish man, uh, <laughs> Noel's, uh, the TARDIS song channel mm. and the mad irishman <laughs> yeah and also just just a small little thing be kind to your tour guides please be careful <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a a please if you come here i'll be very happy to show you everywhere but please do not be an asshole and leave a tip thank you very much <laughs> there. here's a tip don't watch the dark side anyway, sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either that or flux. Uh, I, I, I watch the dark side. <laughs> uh, I don't want to watch. Uh, don't want to watch flux. <laughs> See, you, you've only had to mention Doctor Who flux, and Wendy's yeah, exactly. just been hitting the hard stuff already. Yeah. She's, she had to have a stiff drink. Where can, where can people connect with you, Wendy? And I understand you're you're on social media, aren't you? But you you also pop up on YouTube on on various channels and various streams. You want to plug a couple of those. Oh yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm on uh, PJ Maybe's Let's Talk Geeky. Um, is he back? On he is back now. 
Um, he had uh, a bit of work uh, intervened, uh, as mm. it does sometimes. So he, he had to do a little bit of traveling, but he's back now. Um, mm. So uh, that's on Saturday nights um, on PJ Maybe's channel. Um, I have been um, obviously very fortunate to be asked on to uh, Dan's uh, uh, listed. Fortunate. Like listed. Um, <laughs> and um and also um, is that what you like seeing <laughs> yeah see uh and mr hyde and and myself are co-hosting a b movie cinema show yes. uh on sundays uh which has been um a load of fun we've been having a really good time with that so wow. we watch a mixture of classic um horror films that are sort of out of copyright now you know quite quite older films and and the next one coming up sunday we've actually departed from the horror and we've got a, a kind of a fun surprise so so that should be fun super duper that's with mr hyde which what's the name of the channel again um it's well the show is called the b movie cinema show and it's mr hyde um i think there's a couple of mr hydes on youtube but if you if you look up uh the b movie cinema show it should come up Mm, good stuff absolutely sounds good yes so again a reminder please like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the cluster bell for the notifications and come and find me on social media i'm on twitter and instagram as the space book where i am uh, geeking out and sharing about really whatever crosses my <laughs> my mind or my imagination or both in the world of out there entertainment sometimes i even talk sense but that's that's not a given Depends on which day you catch me, what time, what time of day. And yeah, we'll be publicizing what we're doing next on this show in a couple of weeks' time. Don't miss that. Basically, once we've chosen it, that's how technical it is around here, isn't it, Ian? Yep. <laughs> Working our way, our way down that list. But yeah, thank you to everybody for listening in on this conversation and for watching. I'm certainly going to go and I think I might watch another Tales from the Dark Side before bed if I've if I've got the if I've got the nerve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us know what you think of it in the comment section. But uh, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be watching we'll be watching something somewhere. You know that Nicky will be. He's probably got about eight episodes or something queued up right away. But yeah, that's that's it for us this time. We'll speak to you again soon. Night night. Night. <laughs>